electronics project. And yes, it is an electronics and Amiga related project. So there's a crossover of interests here. And uh, what I'm what I want to do is I've always had a bit of an issue with the Amiga sound output. And um, I've in way back in the day, I'm talking 20 years ago. And uh, this is nothing to do with the problem. I'm just playing background music on, by the way. We're talking about 20 years ago and, um, you know, my electronics was really crude back then. You know, I always used to um, just do everything without thinking. But nowadays the Amiga is so expensive and, you know, probably it's like the value of it has gone up so high. And um, it's sort of one of the things I'm paranoid about it now. I don't want to mess it up or anything like this. So. Now this circuit design is not going to be active, it's actually going to be passive, so it's going to be quite a simple circuit rather than, you know, I don't want to start building amplifiers here. So first things first, what I'm going to do is the rails. Now we have the right channel and we have the left channel. And uh, obviously each one has a ground which is going to be, you know, joined. And we have the right channel itself, the left channel itself. Now what we need to do here is um, I'm gonna do a separate color for the components. This is the output of the Amiga, by the way. No, left, right. Now what we need to do is DC blocking. This stops any unwanted DC going in there, just in case there's any risk of it. So let's just series capacitor. I have our little friend here, and it joins onto this, and this side of it joins onto that. Now. And of course, the center is going to join onto one of the. The values are. I'm basing them. The variable is just going to be an estimate. I'm going to do some testing. Uh, but these, I'm basing them on, you know, typically what I've seen as DC blocking capacitors. And that tends to be for 47 of <laughs> microfarads. And uh, each of them, of course. And this, um, let's let's do a 20k for now. With the variable resistor here, what's going to happen is um, the when you've put this all the way down, it's going to be shorted. So the right channel and the left channel are going to be shorted together, therefore giving mono output. Now, obviously, when you put this, you know, up. There'll be a lot of resistance between them, therefore, it is going to be, uh, you know, separated. You know, when it's shorted left and right, of course, without the capacitors, this will see this will be seen as a short over here. Now, the capacitors, you know, even when this is shorted, this will not be seen as a short. So the less that's you know that's messed around with the Amiga's internals, the better, and I'm sure many of you agree. Another plan which I have is a second device. I'm not going to tell you because it's going to be a little surprise for the future. <laughs> and if my marker freaking works. Wakey wakey. Mm. Wake the freak up. Okay, so it woke up. <laughs> right, so again, we have this. So what I'm basically doing now is making a passive mixer. Okay, so this uh, surprise output here, which as I said, I'm not going to reveal. It's going to be exactly the same as that. The grounds will be joined here. There's no problem. Before we join the two outputs from the two devices up into one channel, what's going to happen if you connect this right to that right directly is that you will get the sound from here going back into this. As far as I know, there's nothing much I can do about that. Um, I hope it doesn't damage it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the current by using resistors. Now the value of these, let's you know, estimate, let's call it 500 ohms for now. And of course, all of them identical. And so right connects to right, leaving you this. And left connects to left, again, leaving you this. So there's like a sim you know, there's a single output for each. And of course our friend ground here is gonna be here. So you have the grounds all connected. You don't need to do anything with the grounds, just connect them from the start to the end. 
and this is the new output. One more thing. DC blocking on the output also. DC blocking capacitors. And that's the best way I can think of doing it, you know, in the simplest way. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building this thing on the breadboard. Okay, so we have all our components here. Okay, just to be clear here, just in case you do not know how a breadboard works, um, you have the the rails at the bottom, like you have the blue one here, which is negative, and then positive at the far bottom, and then at the top you've got exactly the same, negative at the top and positive, and these go across. I think these you have to bridge these, you know, if you want to make it go all the way across. But these connect to all these five. Right now, in the center here, you have you know connected vertically. They're not connected horizontally, going up and down. So, as long as you're sure, as long as you remember that. This here, this bottom side, this first row, I'm gonna make it as a left channel. We're only doing one input, by the way, not both of them. Then the top one, we're gonna do the right channel. Now, the rest of the four holes there are left. The rest of the four holes going up there are right. We stick one of the terminals inside there and the second terminal let's stick it all the way down here. So as you can see one is going inside here coming from the right going through the cluster and coming going into here. So basically we have done this part of the circuit. We want to do this part again the same thing so what we need here now is one of these. Oh, okay. The second prong here connects to one of the ends. That's the wiper, this thing. Yeah. And let's make that just like this. So these two connect together to that. And the other one is going to be here. So we have that. That's our variable resistor. Let's put that down here. Now this is left channel. This is right channel. However, the DC blocked. These are coming from the output of the Amiga. Yeah. Left, right. Now what we need to do here is connect the variable resistor. here and here to these two both of these two now what will happen here is you put this all on the one side it'll short these two out however this will not see the short actually you know what ground is confusing us let's leave ground out for now yeah easier okay so let's get the meter out to test the um if it shows up as a short or not these two it detects a short let's put this here directly on the variable resistor can you see that's a short yeah you turn it all the way up it's a short now let's see if that short is detected on the side of things on the amiga side of things amiga output Turn this, no shot detected. Okay, so now let's continue with the rest of the circuit. Now we have the 500 ohm resistors, and uh, as as I told you that the the rest of the lines going up, you know, it goes vertical. So let's put the resistor in here and put it all the way down here. Space the circuit out of it on the bread part, and we do exactly the same on this side so we're we're here now i'm putting these in even though we're not testing the mixing circuit i'm putting these in to test how quiet it's gonna be if it's acceptable or not All right okay so we have we need to do, take it through the output so we need um more dc blocking capacitors so that 
turning this variable resistor so that turning this variable resistor will not make the output be shorted. And as I've put the I've connected the capacitors on the output here and these are the outputs. So what we need to do is connect them to here. Let's connect ground. The Amiga's output connects to this and then we have the output here which you know has the stereo separ stereo separation adjustment. And uh, of course the ground goes ground is the same input output since this is a passive circuit not an active circuit. So we just connect ground to this the output. Okay, so that's good. Now let's test it. Now I'm not going to connect this directly to the Amiga. You know, come on, I'm not that crazy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record some Amiga um, music with the separation. I now have my Amiga on this side of the room as opposed to the, you know, where it used to be before on the desk. I've got uh, free space on the desk now and of course over here, you know, I can uh, connect the Amiga to the Hi-Fi, the main Hi-Fi system. Okay, so now let's do some recording. So let's choose a mod which is um, ripped from a game, Hero Quest, the title theme. And um, I think you're going to be able to hear this directly from the Amiga to the camera because <laughs> it's, you know, connected into the mixer. As okay, so record levels to check. Oh, look, you can hear my voice. La la la. <laughs> Okay, I better put the mics down then. So done. Now let's go and test it. Okay, so we are back over here, and this is the cassette I just recorded the Amiga soundtrack on. And uh, let's so let's put this in, rewind it. Okay, that I don't want to use the Amiga directly. I do not want to use, you know, because they're expensive and rare. This one, I will be less sad. If something happens, I'll be sad, but I'll be less sad. I'm going to do a setup that allows you to hear exactly what I'm doing real time through this circuit. So, you know, as well as hearing the microphone, you're going to hear what goes on here. This is going to be connected to your ears. <laughs> In other words, play it directly. Directly from this cassette to you, but this is mid thingy quieter. So whichever one is left or right, you know, the, the bottom one's ground, the middle one's left or right, and as with the top one. So, let's connect these to our circuit. The green one, ground, we connect to this, goes straight through to the output, and this left or right, connected to one of them, one of the inputs, and the yellow one connected to the other. And everything should be fine. Mm -hmm. And your ears, we connect them to the output. First things first, I've noticed that it's very quiet. Let me just... Yep, ow, sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, it's very quiet. That's because these resistors here, as you can see these two, they're too high, the value. We don't want it so high that the freaking it kills the Amiga sound because it's so quiet. So let's let's start by replacing these with lower values. Now these were 500 ohms. This is the problem with making a passive mixer as opposed to a, an active mixer. The signal is not amplified. You gotta save. Let's, let's make them 21k. A little louder. Let's compare it against the original. Okay. 
not much of a drop and that's fine I'm just happy that there's some sort of resistors there I'm not kind of happy with nothing being there whatsoever now let's try the stereo separation and see if that potentiometer is at the right value if you hear that works you hear this is mono and now it's very wide the problem is that 20k value is too high I think something like a 5k would be way better let me see if I've got some okay good news is that the circuit actually works bad news is that I cannot find a variable resistor that's below 20k so I actually have done the circuit fine I've looked around the only ones I can find you know is like uh, more 20k's uh, this one 2 meg this one 50k well it's 50k's here and there's a light dependent resistor here so basically if you connect this the stereo separation will be dependent on <laughs> the amount of light <laughs> hey let's try it <laughs> I'm curious <laughs> this is so stupid but so worth it okay so there's the LDR sitting there and uh, let's put your ears in here. <laughs> oh my, it works! You shine a light on it, it reduces the stereo separation. So let's try to determine which value variable resistor we need. Now, how I'm going to do that is um, connect different um, value resistors, and which whatever value starts to you know narrow the stereo separation, I will base it around that the value. I was thinking around 5k. What the freak, 32 meg? It's got some stupid sticky sticky stuff on it. Okay, so let's let's try a 6k all the way across. So this this green. I'm gonna put your ears on it and let's put the resistor across the left and right channel and see if it makes a difference. If it does make a difference, that means you know we're on the right you know on the right uh, area. If it doesn't make a difference, we need to decrease the resistance. Okay, we have determined that we need the value of a 1k 1k variable resistor because that will give a whole sweep from 0 to 1. It starts, you can start hearing a difference when you go below 1k. So I'm going to order a couple of 1k um, potentiometers or variable resistors. So we are sorted for the value we need and everything is looking good. This is a revised circuit diagram which I decided to draw out again and I've made a few changes here, well improvements I should say. Uh, I have put two extra DC blocking capacitors because I realized that uh, if you turn this potentiometer it will affect that one, it will short out this one uh, or vice versa as well so you need to kind of make DC blocking in front of that. All the capacitors are 47 microfarad, all the resistors are 20 ohms as far as I know, this is just straight from my mind as far as, as how I think it will work. And I would like to say thank you so much for your likes. Uh, do subscribe for more videos. And um, for now, I say adios.